Kevin, thanks so much for joining us at the Big Data Conference. Oh, um, thank you for having me. It'd be great to hear a little bit about what you're doing at Analytic and what you're excited about. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm the uh, COO and lead scientist at Analytic, and we develop clinical applications of artificial intelligence, uh, primarily within radiology, though uh, also in a few other areas of digital diagnostics. I've done a bit of work in uh, some cardiology, oncology, and uh, genomics as well. And for the most part, we build systems that we can uh, use to augment radiologist insights in real clinical environments to help them provide faster, earlier, and more accurate diagnostics. Uh, obviously, this field has been booming in the past few years, but kind of what are the big challenges you need to overcome in the immediate timeline? <laughs> Too many. Uh, I think one obvious one is regulatory barriers. I think a lot of uh, government bodies, not just the FDA, uh, but elsewhere in the world are trying to figure out how they can validate these solutions and make sure that they're adequately proven out before they can do any damage. Uh, beyond that, there, there are other legally related concerns around patient privacy. Uh, obviously, data is king in this industry, and it's very hard to get access to data because uh, rightfully so, people hold on to it very tightly. Uh, and that's created this impetus to create very good anonymization software and, and other things around security to maintain that patient privacy. Uh, I think there are technological hurdles that need to be overcome, uh, particularly in unsupervised learning, because uh, right now everybody's beholden to how quickly they can label things, and that's a massive expense. Uh, I think that there's a lot of work, uh, of course, on the hardware side to improve compute. Uh, I personally am praying for better GPUs. And uh, I think that there's a lot of work to be done in just knowledge discovery and, and, and product marketing in the field and user experience research to understand what are the important problems to solve that people will actually be receptive to adopting and using, and can we craft those in a way that is actually providing real clinical value. Mm -hmm. um, and fortunately, these are all fun problems to solve, but uh, they are still very real problems that everybody's dealing with today. Mm -hmm. And how is that different, you know, working now in healthcare versus the previous industries you were in before kind of with your tech background? <laughs> Uh, I think one thing that um, particularly scared me was growing up, I always respected a lot of well put together software, things that I thought were very complete products. Uh, Excel, I think, is a great example. Uh, I worked on the Excel team at Microsoft, and, and you know, once you peek under the hood, you learn that there's uh, a lot more band aids in place than you would have expected. And I think that this is very clear in healthcare as well. Uh, but there, it's a lot more frightening where we see all these hospital systems and even the software being created today to sell to them is being put together in ways that are doomed to break down the line. Um, and, and this creates its own uh, interesting set of problems in and of itself. Uh, but uh, I think particularly within healthcare, the big, big difference is that to fully understand this, these problems well enough to do them justice requires that you be a doctor uh, or be respectful enough of what you know you don't know to learn from them what you should be building and how you should be building it. Mm -hmm. In no other industry I've been in, be it aerospace or, or uh, commercial software like Microsoft, or enterprise software, I guess, uh, before that I was in the toy industry. And it, no other place have I encountered that same set of challenges. And in healthcare, the stakes are a lot higher. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, not only a harder problem, but it matters a lot more that you handle it appropriately. Mm -hmm. And do you build that in on your own team internally, or do you talk with doctors? Absolutely. Or how do you solve for that? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's critical that if we have a team of data scientists, that they are sitting right next to radiologists. Um, so you know, our, our uh, RADs and our, our data scientists sit together so that they can constantly see them interpreting studies all the time. So that if they don't understand why this feature was highlighted in the saliency map, but it's not indicative of cardiac enlargement, then it's helpful to be able to turn to your left and ask Ben, uh, why that is. Mm -hmm. and, and his radiological insight is enormously valuable in understanding that. Uh, I certainly would not trust anybody building solutions remotely close to this field unless they were working very, very closely with doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, and honestly, in most AI fields, I, I wouldn't necessarily trust any solution that did not take point from the experts uh, whose knowledge and function they are trying to replicate. Mm -hmm. I guess, kind of going forward, I know you talked about kind of other outside of radiology. Kind of what else are you looking at or most excited about? Well, I think the overall the most exciting thing to me is this concept of emergent insights. This this idea that uh, though you are taking point from people who are labeling data for you, there are tricks you can play in order to surpass that performance and and sort of discover things that otherwise we might not have even known about. The the, the clear example of that from our end is this early detection of lung cancer that. We're training these models on a combination of CT scans and biopsies that occurred in the future beyond that point. 
a, a definitive gold standard ground truth. And it's from that that the model can learn, doesn't matter what a person thinks. Uh, what it knows is that there is this set of uh, patterns in their features that led to malignancy. Um, and it could be purely subvisual. It could be a thing that's impossible for a person to note. But what I'm very hopeful for is that it is things that people can be taught. Um, so that, you know, even though obviously I, I have every reason in the world to want people to use these AI solutions, I'm incredibly excited about the idea of it inventing new medicine and teaching that back to the people. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Oh, thank you for having me.